I'm Linda Bailey. I'm the executive director of NACTO, and I'm, I'm thrilled to be here with such a great crowd. I'm going to start by introducing our host, um, Scott Kubley, city transportation director in Seattle. Um, Scott has been a force for great improvements in city transportation um, here and before that in Chicago and before that in Washington, D.C. He's, he's on the national tour. Um, and he and his team have put together a dazzling array of workshops this year, um, and they're going to give you a lot of uh, chances to look at what's going on in Seattle and all the really cool things going on. So without further ado, welcome Scott Kubley. Okay, thank you, Linda. Uh, so I really would like to welcome all of you here to Seattle. Uh, I'm sorry the mayor can't make it. He is actually right now giving his budget speech which uh, is probably the most important day of the year for a mayor. Uh, but he's going to be here Wednesday morning. Really excited to see a lot of familiar faces here today. This is actually my favorite conference. It's one of the only ones that I actually go out of my way to go to. And one of the things I like about it is that it's very boutique and you start seeing the same people uh, year after year. The other thing that I'm really excited about is that you guys are getting to experience Seattle at its best. We have. Uh, probably our last great weather weekend of the year. I know all of you are going to be stuck in this convention center not enjoying it every hour of the day, uh, but it's amazing outside. Uh, and so we're really thrilled to host. One of the things that I really love about this conference is it's an opportunity to exchange ideas between cities. We're all doing such amazing work, and we can all learn from each other, and I think that that exchange of ideas uh, makes us all stronger. But the other thing that I really like about this, uh, this conference is it's also, it feels almost like a support group. We all do really challenging and hard work. Uh, if you're in my seat, you periodically get your name in the paper for things wonderful and hard. Uh, so it's really nice to be with a group of people that really understands the work that we're doing, how important it is, and how hard it is. So before I jump into my presentation, I'm going to start with a video. Uh, a lot. <laughs> A lot's changed in 25 years. So we're no longer thinking that way here in Seattle. We've got, uh, we don't even think about park and ride here in Seattle if you uh, read the local blogs, which is great. Uh, and if you go back, I would love if we could have stuck on that. Because if you look at Campbell Scott's face when she says, yeah, you know, I, I still love my car, just seeing his jaw drop, it also reminds me of my dating life. Uh, through much of my 20s and 30s. So if you wanted to experience what it was like to be on a date with me, that was pretty much what it was. Uh, but be, So I'm not going to talk about transportation here in Seattle. What I'm going to talk about is a little bit about the history of the city, because it's, really, it's a really interesting city, and uh, it's got a great history. So Seattle is a town that's been defined by booms and busts. And we're in the middle of a boom right now. But I'm going to take you all the way back to 1851, uh, when Seattle was founded by the Denny Party on Alki Beach, which is where we had our summer parkways event or, uh, uh, yesterday. And a lot of the homes in San Francisco were actually built with Seattle timber. Uh, and so when a lot of you might think of Skid Row, this is who you think of. All, by the way, all my cultural references are extremely dated. Uh, <laughs> So this was a hair metal band from the 80s, for those of you who don't get it. Sebastian Bach, the guy in the, uh, the, the center with the amazing hair, total dreamboat in the 80s. Uh, but in reality, Skid Row is Yesler Way. This is Yesler Way. Uh, it's the original Skid Row. It's where uh, the loggers slid the roads down the street to the Yesler Mill and sent them off to San Francisco. And here's what it looks like, maybe, today. Uh, we're actually replacing the bridge. Uh, so you can't actually slide down Skid Row today. Uh, but this is, a, this is a great project that we have. Where we're re, uh, replacing a 100-year-old bridge. Uh, so the next boom that we had was the Klondike Gold Rush. The SS Portland sailed into Seattle Harbor with a ton of gold from the Klondike. And it set off the Klondike Gold Rush. And there was some San Francisco uh, competition with uh, when the news broke about the Klondike Gold Rush. But it started companies like Nordstrom, Eddie Bauer, and I actually found this out researching this presentation, UPS. So UPS started here, and now it's in Atlanta. Uh, this is one of our early public works projects. So Seattle has this amazing environmental ethic. Uh, <laughs> now, we're uh, much like Rome, a city built on seven hills. 
Uh, this is Denny Hill. It was the seventh hill. Now there are six. Uh, we power washed the hill away so you could flatten it out. Uh, it's known as the Denny Regrade. And so it's one of the few flat parts of the city. Uh, but our next boom was the Boeing boom. And this is a photo of the first 707 uh, being pulled out of the Boeing, uh, Boeing plant up in Everett. And the little house that you see on the left is kind of this ubiquitous housing style. It's the Boeing bungalow. You'll see it a lot if you get out into the neighborhoods in, here in Seattle. And then we hosted the World's Fair in 1962. Uh, it was really focused about science and space and catching up with the Russians because they had launched Sputnik. Uh, but then we had, uh, we had what quite possibly, and if you guys are, any of you are doing ballot initiatives, just think forward about what you're gonna call your ballot initiative. This is, uh, the ballot initiative was called Forward Thrust. Uh, and it had three components to it. One was the King Dome. Uh, one was a big expansion of our city park system. And the last was a subway system, a 50-mile subway system. And you can see the lines throughout the city. And two of the three passed. Uh, we got amazing parks, and we have the Seahawks and the Mariners, and we do not have our subway system. Atlanta actually has our subway system. And they got 90% of it paid for by the federal government. Uh, just a little bit of a side, I'm going to uh, explain the geography of the city. So we're in an hourglass shape, uh, and we're bisected in the east and the west by I-5, and the north and the south by the Ship Canal, which you kind of see uh, in the northern part of the city. And then we have West Seattle, which I affectionately describe as a combination of Venice Beach and Staten Island. It's, uh, it's got this beautiful little waterfront, but then it's up on the hill, it's, uh, it's this, uh, a lot of city employees live there. It's cut off from the rest of the city. It's developed its own cultural identity. Uh, but it's a really wonderful place. And it's, it's connected to the city by one bridge, just like Staten Island. Uh, so a little, little Seattle geography. What it does is it makes our system incredibly fragile, though. So if we have a single crash, the entire, the entire network breaks down. But then, after the Boeing boom, we had the Boeing bust. And Boeing canceled the supersonic transport plane program. That was the Boeing equivalent of the Concorde. And they shed 40,000 jobs in a year. They went from 80,000 jobs to 37,000 jobs in one year. 12% unemployment, the highest employment in any city uh, since the Great Depression. And uh, that was an actual billboard. At the same time, Pike Place Market, if you guys have had a chance to visit it, there was a time when we were actually thinking about tearing that down. Uh, we were going to build apartments, a hotel, four office towers, 4,000 parking spaces, and a hockey arena. And I would love to have a hockey arena somewhere in Seattle, but I'm really glad we kept the market. And there was a local architect, Victor Steinbrook, that you know, galvanized Seattleites to save the market. And this is this history of Seattleites, they get galvanized a lot around issues. Uh, this is one, a lot of times we bear the brunt of that. Uh, but this is an example of when it's really, it's really paid great dividends. Our next boom was the 80s. Uh, you may remember this gentleman, this, this young criminal from New Mexico. Well, he's not from New Mexico, but he was living in New Mexico at the time. Decided to move his company to Bellevue, which is a little suburb on the other side of the lake. So this is Bill Gates uh, getting arrested uh, somewhere in New Mexico for speeding. He moved the, the company up here. Uh, and so that led to a boom through the 80s and 90s. We also were the epicenter for global music for roughly a year. And then uh, I think New York, uh, New York fashion or somebody in the fashion world decided that flannel would make haute couture. And the authenticity that like, led to grunge quickly died. Uh, so for, but, but like a year we had it. So now we're in the, the middle of our most recent boom, and it's been founded again, it's been started again by a tech company, Amazon. About, I would say, 95-ish. Uh, Jeff Bezos was running a hedge fund, made a decision to leave that, start a new company, and he was looking for different places to start a business. And he looked at, you know, he's starting a book business, so he needs to be close to book distributors. And he's starting a software company, so he needs to be close to local talent. He needs a good local talent pool. And so he settled on Seattle, and he uh, settled in the city. Uh, and they've moved around a little bit as they've grown, but this is uh, under construction right now, these spheres. And this is really the, 
the front door of their downtown campus. And so right now they probably have 30,000 employees in the middle of downtown, and they're projected to grow by another 20 or 30,000 over the next five to 10 years. So that's leading to uh, just cranes everywhere. At any, any given time, we probably have in the neighborhood of 50 to 60 tower cranes up in the city. So this is, I like to joke around that we're going through urban puberty, uh, where we're not quite a small city anymore. We're not quite a big city. We have buildings going up in new places. It's causing us to have all sorts of anxieties. Uh, so that's as blue as I'm going to get. But, uh, but it's, really, it's really the story of what's going on in Seattle right now is growth. And it's a story that's going on in a, a lot of cities. And it's creating a lot of anxiety around the work that we're doing. And so what we're having to do is convince people that we can do addition by subtraction, that we can take lanes away and dedicate them to transit and carry more people. And then the last bit of Seattle uh, that I think is really something that I didn't fully appreciate until I got here is the port. We're actually the most trade dependent state in the entire country. And so uh, at the same time we have this great progressive culture, we're dealing with a freight community that's trying to move goods and services out of the port uh, through this tremendous growth. And that's also leads to a lot of challenges, a lot of trade-offs, trying to balance the two. And so well, what are we doing about it? So this is, I'm just going to do a quick plug. Uh, we are doing a street scrabble tournament Wednesday, no, Tuesday night, uh, up by the Capitol Hill Light Rail Station. Susan McLaughlin right there is going to be doing it. Uh, if you're interested in signing up, uh, just email streetscrabble at seattle.gov. Uh, if you have to spell it, you're probably not going to win. <laughs> or if you need me to spell it, rather, you're probably not going to win. But it's going to be a great opportunity. So what are we doing about uh, dealing with all these challenges that we're facing around growth? Well, the first thing that we're doing is we're, we're asking voters to fund transportation investments. So we passed a levy in November 2014. Uh, six-year, $270 million transit levy, leading to a 15% increase in transit service, the biggest increase in transit service in the city's history. Uh, we passed a $930 million levy, nine years, $930 million levy that's paying for transportation. Uh, infrastructure investments, so seven rapid ride corridors, 50 miles of protected bike lanes, 60 miles of neighborhood greenways safe routes to schools, to literally every public school in the city of Seattle, so a lot of big investments. Uh, we just opened a U-Link light rail extension that increased the ridership on our, our new light rail system by about, I think, yeah, like 40, 50% in a day, like basically overnight. And then we have on our ballot, and you'll notice the map here is very similar to our forward thrust map 50 years later. We're actually going out to that ballot with a $54 billion ballot initiative to build out our light rail system. So it's, it's huge, uh, which is really exciting. One of the really exciting things about living in Seattle is that uh, the electeds here are not afraid to put big things on the ballot and take it to the voters. And we tend to be successful because I think the, the voters tend to be ahead of most people, like most you know, kind of elected leadership, and that they want these investments. Uh, we're also uh, not just building big capital investment, but we're also uh, dedicating right-of-way to transit to make sure that we can keep uh, carrying people effectively, putting in protected facilities so it's safe uh, for people of all ages and abilities to bike. Uh, we're focusing on operations. We've had, I've had two trucks full of seafood crash on the viaduct uh, since I got here. Like basically one happened and then almost exactly a year later another one happened. So we're focusing on operations to really get crashes cleared quickly. Uh, we tore our streetcars out, and now we're putting them back in. Uh, this is a pretty cool streetcar. It can actually run without overhead wires for a couple miles. And then uh, this is one of my favorite projects here in Seattle. This is actually brand new. This is one of our, our pavement to parks projects. It was actually designed by the kids that live in the neighborhood. And so they've got their names written into it. Uh, uh, it's really, it's a really cool project. Uh, and then just because you guys are going to be stuck in here, I'm going to give you a little bit of orientation. So to the south is the big uh, mountain. That's Mount Rainier. Uh, to the east, you have the Cascades. And so you'll be looking across a lake to the Cascades. To the west, you have the Olympic uh, Peninsula with, and they're not that snow-capped now because it's not wintertime. 
And then to the north, you actually have another volcano, Mount Baker. And so you know, as you're going around, you're going to get some nice, clear weather. I would take some time to uh, enjoy the scenery around here. It's probably, I'm not from here, so I feel like I can brag about it a little bit uh, without sounding too pompous. But it is truly one of the most beautiful places you'll ever be. So thank you guys very much for indulging me and letting me uh, tell you a little bit about Seattle. Thank you.